So now we've designed our name bar and we've animated it in using basic keyframes. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Now we start to run into an issue. It animates on just fine, but how do we animate this off? Do we have to literally go back and make all these keyframes and then reverse them all? And that sounds like a really big headache. We actually are gonna do something called nesting. Nesting is a process in which we take multiple contents from multiple tracks and we package them up into a new subsequence that still exists within our timeline. In order to nest anything, we wanna lasso around all of the media that we wanna package up into our nest. In this case, just our name bar graphics and text layers. Then we'll wanna right click any of these and come up to nest. We're gonna rename this nested sequence, Anthony name bar. I'm gonna hit okay. Now this creates a brand new sequence called Anthony name bar and it drops it out over here in the main folder for our project panel. This is a graphic, so I'm gonna drag this into the graphics bin. So now you can see Anthony's name bar exists inside of our graphics bin. We have now a singular sequence inside of our timeline. Well, what does it do? Video games and just gained a lot of weight. My computer was everything it did before. So what, what is this? How do we start to make sense of a nested sequence? Well, a nested sequence is kind of like a, a folder, if you will. And a folder contains individual pieces of paper. It doesn't mean that you've lost those papers. It just means they're inside of the folder. Same thing is true with a nested sequence. We haven't lost our text layers and our graphics. They're just inside of this nested sequence. To crack open a nested sequence, you simply double click it in your timeline. And that opens up the sequence in our timeline panel just as we left it. And what's nice about this is it's fully editable. We could change the colors of our rectangles. We could even change our text. And then when we go back to our final sequence, those changes are gonna be reflected in this project. And so it's nice because instead of working with like four different tracks of graphics and text with effects on them, we're working with a singular subsequence inside of our timeline panel. Now we want to have this fade off or animate off. And just gained a lot of weight. My computer was right next to the mirror and the nested sequence is as long as these exist, which means if we select all of our layers inside of our nested sequence and drag these out, likewise, come back to Anthony's interview final, notice now we have the ability to trim out quite a ways. And there was this one night where I was playing World of Warcraft, I looked at the mirror and I was probably like 20 pounds. So we want to make sure that we have this on screen long enough to read through twice after it animates on. And just gained a lot of Anthony weight. Trung, B-Boy right Breakdancer. Anthony Trung, B-Boy Breakdancer. So right around there is how long we want it to be on. So now we want it to animate off. Here's the trick. Let's get out our razor blade tool, C on the keyboard, and let's make a cut right where we want it to start to animate off. Let's erase everything afterwards. We're going to duplicate and reverse his name bar. Check it out. Hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and drag his name bar to the right of itself. All we did here is we literally duplicated his name bar. But now I want to reverse this. Right click the second duplicate and come to speed and duration. And let's check the box that says reverse speed. Click OK. Ah, so all we did here was we created the two ends. Now it's going to animate on. And then it's going to animate off in the exact same way that it came. This is a really great name bar trick that I use all the time. It saves me a bunch of time because I only have to animate the in. And then I can split it, duplicate it, and reverse it to get a mirrored animated out. Now, obviously, this duplicated the time of our animation. And none of that would be possible if we didn't nest it first. 
Now, obviously this duplicated the length of our name bar. So we wanna be able to trim this and make sure that it exists on screen long enough to read it through twice. So we don't want it to be on there for you know 15 seconds. So let's try this again. Anthony Trung, B-Boy Breakdancer. Anthony Trung, B-Boy Breakdancer. Good, then it animates off. Perfect. Let me bring back my audio here. And let's watch it through. I was in high school, played a lot of video games, and just gained a lot of weight. My computer was right next to the mirror, and there was this one night where I was playing World of Warcraft. I looked at the mirror, and I... It looks good. Now, let's say we made an error in his name, and we did. I did this on purpose. I spelled his last name wrong. We'd want to double-click our nested sequence, open it up inside of our timeline, and then we can come in here and change anything about this. So his last name is U-O, U-O. And what's nice is I don't have to change this for both duplicates because it's referencing the same name bar. It changes it for both the first and the reversed. And just gained a lot of weight. My computer was right next to the mirror and there was this one night where I was playing World of Warcraft. I looked at the mirror and I... Nice work. So that's how we create an animated lower third name bar inside of Premiere. So get creative, experiment with your keyframes and have fun creating custom graphics for your next project.